another video. So today I'm going to be talking about a very important concept in the Nutritarian diet. So the Nutritarian diet comes from Dr. Joel Furman's book, Eat to Live. It is a type of whole foods plant-based diet that focuses on high nutrient foods. So the purpose of this video is to help you guys out with some of the information that is in Dr. Joel Furman's work. It is a lot of information and it is not mainstream information. So I think that um, sometimes it's good just to have some reinforcement of these concepts to help you stick with the lifestyle. So if you're new to my channel, I make lots of videos about nutritarianism, veganism. So if that interests you, please consider subscribing. So for anyone who is unfamiliar with the nutritarian lifestyle, it is a way of eating that will maximally expand your lifespan, reduce your risks of all chronic diseases, and maintain your ideal body weight. So the first principle of the nutritarian diet is to optimize your nutrient to calorie ratio. And that is a pretty easy concept to understand just to focus on high nutrient foods and not to over consume calories. But there's actually a lot more to this. So you may have heard Dr. Furman say before that you want to eat a diet that is hormonally favorable. So this sounds kind of confusing, but hopefully I can um, help you understand this in this video. And I hope by the end of the video, you will have a greater appreciation for some of the plant foods that I'm going to talk about. So just to compare a nutritarian diet to a standard Western diet, if you look at this chart here, you see that the standard diet is comprised of over 50% processed foods and over 30% animal products. Dr. Furman's recommendations are completely different. He advises that your food should be 90% unprocessed plant foods. In this video, I'm gonna explain some reasons why he encourages you to avoid animal products and processed foods. So first, we'll talk about animal products, and you've probably heard a ton of reasons why people choose to avoid consuming animal products, such as because processed meat and red meat are considered carcinogens, because of the elevated levels of saturated fat, cholesterol, the environmental impacts of animal agriculture, the ethical reasons behind it, but what I'm gonna focus on in particular is why these products are hormonally unfavorable. So one thing that animal products have is they have complete protein. And we used to think that that was why animal protein was better than plant protein. However, we know now that we can get complete protein if we eat a variety of whole plant foods. Our body knows what to do with these amino acids to make the building blocks for complete protein. So when we are eating complete protein from animal products, what it does is it drives the production of something called insulin-like growth factor one, or IGF-1. And IGF-1 is extremely important when you are a baby and when you are growing. And dairy products are full of IGF-1 and it makes sense because dairy is meant for baby calves who are meant to grow into large cows. And studies have shown that when we have really high uh, levels of IGF-1, it is linked to premature death and cancer. We also don't want to have really low levels of IGF-1, but our bodies are actually able to make the appropriate amount of IGF-1 from plant proteins that we eat because plant proteins aren't complete, so they're not absorbed as rapidly, uh, fueling the production of IGF-1 like that. So that is one of the reasons why animal products are off the list and why they are hormonally unfavorable. The next type of food that is hormonally unfavorable is processed foods. So why are processed foods hormonally unfavorable? So foods like flour, sugar, and oil are really high glycemic foods. So they have a high glycemic load. And what that means is when we eat foods with these products, 
they are absorbed very quickly into the bloodstream. So when you have a ton of sugar going into your bloodstream, your pancreas is forced to produce a lot of insulin. And like I said with IGF-1, you do not want a ton of insulin because that has been proven to shorten lifespan. So you might have heard of the glycemic index before. So foods uh, that are low glycemic index are absorbed really slowly into the body and high glycemic index, they are absorbed pretty rapidly. And if you're wondering where meat falls into, it doesn't actually have a really high glycemic index, uh, animal products. However, um, because it encourages the production of IGF-1, that is why I talked about it first. Dr. Furman talks about the most dangerous foods in the world. It would be combining high glycemic foods with animal products. And just think about how many foods actually do that. Pizza, hamburgers, sandwiches. So when you're a nutritarian, you can still eat those kind of foods, but you're going to have to make adjustments. So you're gonna to have to choose um, the whole grains and um, some plant protein instead, but you can still enjoy uh, these delicious foods. So if you have read about Dr. Furman's work before, you know that he suggests eating the G-bombs every day. So those are greens, beans, onions, mushrooms, berries, and seeds. And I'm going to focus on beans right now because beans are pretty much the lowest glycemic food that you can find. So to understand this, let's compare 200 calories of a cupcake and 200 calories of beans. So the cupcake is going to be full of sugar, flour, and oil, those really high glycemic foods. And when you eat that cupcake, it is going to be absorbed super rapidly into your bloodstream, about 50 calories per minute. So it only takes about four minutes for all the calories to be absorbed into your body. And what's gonna happen? Your pancreas is gonna be like shooting out insulin. So when you go to eat the 200 calories of beans, the beans are very low glycemic index. So you're going to be absorbing about one of the calories per minute. So it's going to take over three hours to get that glucose into your bloodstream. So many people are uncomfortable eating beans because it may cause initial gassiness, but I can promise you that the more beans you eat, the more that problem will go away. And it's because your gut bacteria isn't used to digesting beans and the resistant starch. So what happens is the more beans you eat, the more your gut bacteria will change to be able to handle those kinds of foods. So because beans are so high in fiber and resistant starch, so we don't have the enzyme to break down the resistant starch, uh, they are absorbed extremely slowly. So the last thing I wanted to say about low glycemic foods is their capability of the second meal effect. Okay, so what is the second meal effect? Uh, it is something that was coined by Dr. David Jenkins in 1982. So what he showed was that when you eat a meal that has a low glycemic load, so it's not absorbed very quickly, what happens is later, when you eat, say, a higher glycemic load, that higher glycemic load is actually going to be lower because of the foods that you had eaten prior. And Dr. Furman doesn't like the name, the second meal effect, because it is much more powerful than that. The beans that you ate, say, for lunch, could have an effect on the glycemic load of your dinner that day, and even your breakfast the next day. It should be called the third meal, the fourth meal effect, the fifth meal effect. So that's all I wanted to say about the hormonal favorability of the nutritarian diet. 
The nutritarian lifestyle is about so much more than just eating high nutrient foods. It's about avoiding those insulin and IGF-1 spikes in your body and to slow down the aging process and live a long, happy life free of disease. Again, if you are interested in learning more about this, I would recommend picking up one of Dr. Furman's books like the Eat to Live or the Fast Food Genocide books are both really good, but I will also leave um, some links down below if you'd like to learn more. So thank you so much for watching. I hope that you guys got something out of this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.